Not everything that's good for you has to taste like kale juice and be disgusting. Cacao is the powder that they use to make chocolate, which as we all know is quite delicious. And as it happens, it's also a very potent superfood. It might be a powerful brain enhancing neurotropic and also a very effective muscle builder as well. So stay tuned and let's find out more about that. So raw cacao powder is the stuff that they use to make dark chocolate. But did you also know that there's a weird trend starting online of people snorting it? Yes, that's right, snorting cacao powder, the stuff that they use to make chocolate, because apparently they can get a small high from it. That's not what I'm recommending, and I'm not advocating using chocolate to get high. However, it does show you that it has some very potent and interesting active components. And these components can be used to not only increase brain power, concentration, etc., like many other nootropics, but also to boost muscle mass. I say that it's tasty, actually raw cacao powder is not tasty, it's incredibly bitter, like eating a coffee bean. But fortunately, if you eat dark chocolate, then you can get many of the same benefits as you would do from raw cacao itself. It's not as good, and depending on how strong the um, dark chocolate is, how dark, you'll get more benefits and less sugar and less milk. So you want the really pure, like 90% or 80% stuff and again it's still going to contain sugar and it's still going to be it's still essentially a sweet it's got calories in it so do be careful but if you normally eat chocolate you know as your snack then why not swap it for dark chocolate which i think tastes very nice and which will gain you all these benefits as well as we'll see in a moment there are a lot of benefits so let's start with the neurotropic aspects of dark chocolate or raw cacao powder how does it boost brain function and concentration well, this comes down to several things. First of all, dark chocolate contains theobromin. This is a xanthine, much like caffeine, that is a slight stimulant. It increases the heart rate slightly, boosts focus therefore, has a half-life of about 10 hours, so it lasts longer than caffeine and is also slightly milder. So if you're someone who likes to pick me up from caffeine and uses it to concentrate harder at work, but maybe you find it makes you a bit jittery, then dark chocolate or cacao powder is one way that you can get it. Theobromine or theo bromine. But theobromine is definitely not the most interesting part of dark chocolate from a uh, brain boosting perspective. More interesting is something called minus epicatechin, which is a substance, I don't know if I'm saying that right, it's a substance, a flavanol, that increases uh, vasodilation. I've talked about this before in various other videos. Vasodilation widens the blood vessels, allows blood and oxygen to get around the body quicker to the muscles and to the brain. In this case, we're interested in how it helps blood and oxygen get to the brain. So this can give you a slight brain boost, make you more focused and alert in theory. And this is also the mechanism of action for many other um, popular nootropics like vimpocetine or ginkgo biloba. So that's one way that it can give you a slight boost as well. But at the same time, dark chocolate and cacao powder might also be useful as a mood booster because it helps you to increase the production of oxytocin, the love hormone, serotonin, the feel-good hormone, and anandamide, the bliss hormone. Uh, these are all the endorphins, they make you feel a lot better. Anandamide in particular is interesting, this is the one that you uh, produce when you take marijuana, and it's thought to enhance creativity and things. Of course, you're not going to be high, like I said, from eating dark chocolate, so you don't need to worry about that. It might explain why some people um, get some benefits from snorting raw cacao powder, that might also be explained by the vasodilation, or it might be a placebo effect. But either way, eating dark chocolate will give you a slight boost in brain power by increasing circulation to the brain, by waking you up via caffeine and theobramine, yes, because dark chocolate also contains caffeine, and it can boost your mood. And when you combine these different effects, you could have a nice synergistic, you know, lightly picked up, but not too wired effect. There's likely many other things going on here as well. It contains resveratrol, for instance, which boosts the performance of the mitochondria, thereby enhancing cellular energy efficiency. This is something that's been shown in other cases to boost brain power as well. So it could be all kinds of things that make dark chocolate or cacao powder a handy nootropic. Point is though, there are plenty of studies that back up its effectiveness at increasing concentration, etc. And many of these studies weren't even looking at dark chocolate or raw cacao powder, they're just looking at regular chocolate. And they found that people who ate chocolate regularly actually had improved brain performance 
over those people who never ate chocolate. This was shown in some very longitudinal studies, you know, over a long period of time with large samples. And now we know there are some potential good reasons for that. So I'm not saying this isn't a limitless pill by any means. All I'm saying is that if you want to eat something sweet and also potentially get a brain boost, then pick dark chocolate. I didn't want that right now. I just did it for the video. That was a waste. There's also a ready-made nootropic product available that includes raw cacao powder. It's called IQ2. It also contains regular cholinergics, vimpocetine and caffeine. And I've spoken to the guys who make it and they seem like a really good bunch. They seem to have their priorities in the right places. Hopefully I might be working with them in the future. Um, this video is in no way sponsored by them. However, I just thought I'd mention it because if you're looking for a product that contains raw cacao powder, then that is one and seems to be quite good. And now onto the muscle building effects. First of all, your ears might have pricked up when I was talking about the effects that dark chocolate could have as a vasodilator. Of course, bodybuilders are also very interested in vasodilation because it increases blood supply to the muscles. This also increases the sense of pump, which a lot of bodybuilders really enjoy. It gives you that swole feeling that you get after doing just a few repetitions. It's the minus epicatechin that increases the vasodilation and it does this by raising nitric oxide and many bodybuilding supplements are aimed at increasing nitric oxide. And more recent studies have shown that nitric oxide might also increase the number of satellite cells which are around the muscles and which the body uses in order to repair muscle damage, bringing back the muscle fibers thicker and stronger. This is thought to be one of the main mechanisms of hypertrophy. But more interesting than that is the fact that minus epicatechin might also work to reduce the amounts of myostatin by increasing folistatin, which reduces myostatin. I definitely said that in the very best way possible. Basically, dark chocolate can decrease myostatin. Myostatin we don't like because it breaks down muscle tissue. It's produced naturally by the body at the same time as cortisol, usually when you're hungry, and it seems to encourage the body to break down muscle tissue to use as energy and to make the body more energy efficient. In studies where animals have been genetically modified in order to remove their production of myostatin, they increase their muscle mass by something but like 30% with no noticeable side effects. One human child was even born with no myostatin production, a natural genetic mutation, and they were, as a baby, they had massive calves and could apparently do the iron cross. So if you could completely get rid of myostatin, you'd be like a superhero, you'd be super strong without even having to go to the gym. Dark chocolate will not uh, completely reduce your myostatin. It's more likely to have a very tiny effect. The amounts of minus epicatechin you'd have to consume, you wouldn't possibly be able to get from dark chocolate without becoming a fatty, which would kind of reverse the whole point of boosting the muscle in the first place. There are pure minus epicatechin supplements that you can take in order to do this. Um, I don't know if they've been tested or if they're even effective, but all I'm saying is if eating large amounts of minus epicatechin can boost your muscle mass greatly by reducing myostatin, then eating small amounts in dark chocolate might be able to have some positive effect. And again, I'm talking about replacing your regular chocolate snack with dark chocolate. And if that can also enhance your muscle mass, then why not? It seems like a no brainer to me. So that's what I'm doing at the moment anyways. This has been shown to be effective in studies in human trials. We've seen humans uh, have noticeable drops in their myostatin levels and increases in folostatin, and those same participants saw their grip strength increase by 7%. There was no control group in that particular study, but it's all very promising. So like I say, eat up with the dark chocolate and keep an eye on those epicatechin uh, supplements, see if they get good reviews and things, because it's certainly interesting, and I imagine it'll be finding its way into a lot more supplements soon. Dark chocolate is also packed with other nutrients. It's high in fiber, magnesium, zinc, uh, potassium, so it's super good for you you might as well, again, replace your regular milky chocolate processed Mars bar that doesn't contain anything good and just tons of calories with dark chocolate, which has fewer calories and much more goodness in it. So it's not empty calories. And things like magnesium and potassium, these are great for the brain and for bodybuilding also. Also very interesting is dark chocolate has positive effects on blood pressure, on your heart rate, on your skin. It's not all good, nothing is all good. Unfortunately, dark chocolate is also a diuretic and can make you go to the toilet a bit. And occasionally I do find I have that problem myself taking it, but most people don't have that issue. I guess I've just got a sensitive stomach. Uh, it also can increase omega-6 fatty acid. And omega-6 fatty acid you don't want to increase because we get enough of that anyways. 
and when you have too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, it causes um, inflammation in the brain and omega-3 uh, depletes even further. And omega-3 is very good for you because it can increase cell membrane permeability. I won't get into that now, but if you're gonna take a lot more dark chocolate, then I would recommend an omega-3 fatty acid tablet, but I would recommend that anyways. That's a supplement that everyone can benefit from. And as though all that wasn't good enough, dark chocolate is also uh, one source of resveratrol, one of the most popular antioxidants that increases um, mitochondrial function and is just all round really good for you. So yeah, dark chocolate is not gonna change your life. It's not gonna turn you into the guy from Limitless anymore. It's not gonna give you massive muscles, but it might support brain function and muscle development. And it's packed with good stuff. It's certainly better than milk chocolate. So if you want a good snack, I recommend some sticks of dark chocolate. And if you find it a little bit bitter, apparently adding salt can be nice. I'm not a fan of doing that, but I do like to have it with a cup of coffee and the coffee's bitterness counteracts the dark chocolate's bitterness and it's delicious. So give it a go. So thanks very much for watching guys. Hope you found that interesting and useful. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Will you be eating dark chocolate now? Have you been doing so already and I'm just late to the party? Um, what other superfoods or neurotropics or muscle boosters would you like me to cover in future? Um, if you did find this video useful, then please consider liking it or sharing or subscribing. It helps me out immensely and I'll have much more content like this and also not like this uh, on the way soon. If you'd like to hear about that, then please do subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.